Hey guys, so in today's video I'm doing a book review of um, The Confession by Jessie Burton. Now I literally just finished this book yesterday so I thought I would give you guys a quick review on my thoughts. Now this is the third book I've read by Jessie Burton. She is also the author of The Miniaturist and The Muse, both quite popular books. And from what I have read on Goodreads, this is also quite a popular book. It got like a 3.99 uh, rating on Goodreads, so nearly four stars, which is really good um, for Goodreads. And a majority of the reviews I read were very positive. However, there were a few not so positive reviews. And the ones that seemed to not be positive were ones that were really not good they were either like five star reviews or like one to two star reviews and I kind of feel like I'm somewhere in the middle with this author um with this book I've mentioned before in both the muse and the miniaturist I find her quite a confusing author um because I really really like her writing style I think she writes fabulous characters very believable characters, characters that you can see being real people and you get quite invested in them. However, they're not always the most likeable people and I often find her books to be quite dissatisfying by the end. Um, with both of her other books, um, I found them to have both, both of them had um, n not not bad endings but not happy endings per se so I kind of went into this book knowing it was probably going to have an ending that I wasn't going to be satisfied with but I still wanted to read it because like I said I enjoyed her writing, st her writing style and her stories were all quite interesting however I would have to say unfortunately this is probably my least favourite out of the three books that I've read my favourite by far being The Miniaturist, which was a historical fiction. Um, this book, The Confession, it pulled quite similar to The Muse. So if you really, really liked The Muse, I think you're definitely going to like this one. However, The Muse, again, was a bit difficult for me to review because, again, I love the writing style and the story was interesting. But the characters kind of fell flat and the story just didn't really come together like I hoped it would. And in fact that one came together better than this one did. Um, so basically this story, it follows, it has, a, it has two different timelines, it jumps back and forth, which is not my favourite aspects in books, I've said this before. Um, it jumps back and forth between two different... Um, storylines but they are linked they do come together at the end which again is similar to the muse her second book so this book follows a woman called rose and she is feeling a bit disjointed in her life and she grew up never knowing about her mother her mother disappeared when she was a baby and she literally knows nothing about her and now she's kind of entering her 30s and she's trying to figure out her own life. She's decided that she really, really wants to find out more information about her mother. And her dad gives her a little bit of information that her mother, before she was with him, she was in love with a woman called Constance, who is a famous author and has written a few famous books. One of her books was even turned into a film. Um, so she was quite well known and apparently this woman was the last woman to see her mother before she disappeared. So Rose kind of sets out on this journey to find this woman and discover or try and discover what happened to her mother. So the story jumps back and forth in time like I said. So it starts off in 19, uh, 1980s where her mother Elise meets Constance so it jumps back and forth between the mother and Constance the mother and the lover and then it jumps back to um the daughter Rose in real time who is trying to find Constance and, and uh, uncover things about her mum now I have to say at the beginning of this book I found most of the characters very interesting I was quite invested into what was going on with her mother's life and how it progressed because obviously you're seeing it um, 
the parts with the mother and Constance, it's interesting because you're uncovering things about the mum before Rose is. So that was quite an interesting kind of concept. But I have to say by the end of this book, like I said, I knew it was going to have a dissatisfying ending because the other two did. And in the first book, The Miniaturist, the dissatisfying ending was still a good ending. Like it made sense for the story and I still, I really, really liked the main character of that book. But with this story, by the end of the book, I really hated all of the characters. There was not one character that I liked. They were all, they all just kind of fell apart and their reasoning for doing things was a bit silly and I just feel like a lot of this book was kind of pointless towards the end because if the dad had just been more honest with his daughter, she would have known a hell of a lot more about the situation, about her mother and what happened. And it just kind of all fell apart. And normally when you read stories, you, you like the characters to develop and there's some kind of meaning to the story. But in this story, the main character, Rose, who's trying to figure out her life and kind of set things in motion, set things in motion and you know get to know herself i feel like by the end of the book she's kind of in a similar situation or not or if worse off than in the beginning because still nothing really changed for her she was still in kind of the same position and it was kind of set up like that she knew herself more than what she thought she did but it was all just a bit strange and the um the woman constance is really not a very nice person and she's written as if to be this woman that her mother fell in love with and she has this kind of almost magic around her where people get drawn to her and they want to know more about her and it kind of happens with Rose as well she gets drawn to this woman Constance and wants to deep you know in you know go deeper into her life and kind of find out more about her and they get lost within her and but really she comes across as quite a nasty person in my mind um she does quite a lot of horrible things in this book and people just seem to brush it off and forgive her um, aside from her mother but Rose in this book I feel like she should be more angry with her by the end of the book um, I don't want to say too much to give it away but yeah I just find Jessie Burton's books quite interesting but really difficult to review because I can't give her like a super low rating because I really like the writing style and the stories are somewhat interesting, although I will say this is probably the least interesting out of the other two books. I do really recommend, like I said, The Miniaturist. I did have some issues with it. I think it was one of the first books I reviewed on this channel. Um, and The Muse, are, again, I was kind of like on the fence about. So with this book, I'm glad I read it, but I'm probably going to have to say I won't pick up any more of her books unless there's like a real strong premise in her next one that I'm desperate to read. Purely because in this one I feel like it was the most dissatisfying ending because there was just so many things in it that I felt didn't gel well. Like I feel like this was a book mainly set around women and women's views on relationship and women's views on motherhood. I really didn't like how motherhood was portrayed in this book. She has, um, there's like f four different women in this book who struggle with different or have different views on motherhood you know one woman gets accidentally pregnant one woman loses a child she has Rose has a friend who is trying to balance her work and motherhood and Constance just doesn't want children and she's happy with that fact and then obviously there's her mother who obviously abandoned her when she was a child and I feel like it just portrays motherhood in a really bleak almost depressing light like there was not one person in this book who actually thrived in motherhood and it was okay and yeah it's not all sunshine and rainbows it can be difficult and scary and hard at times but there's also some really wonderful things about motherhood and it didn't really portray any women as having that and I understand that not all women feel the same and for some women it's not going to be what they thought and they're not going to want it but then there are some women that do so I feel like when you have so many strong female characters in this book you should kind of represent all angles instead of just completely shitting on the whole idea of motherhood because that's kind of what I felt like it was towards the end of the book. Um, I've kind of felt like it bashed it a little bit and again you can be a feminist book we're still having, I don't know, it just rubbed me the wrong way and 
again, you can have strong female characters in the book without having really stupid, weak male characters because the two male characters that are in this book, her father, Rose's father and her boyfriend, both come across as kind of, again, weak, like sappy, like just not kind of caring people like i said if her dad had told her so much more in the beginning it would have made things so much easier for her and if she'd just been honest with her partner then maybe things would have gone differently i don't know it was just i didn't yeah i didn't like how the relationships were portrayed in this book so i didn't feel like that was so great i feel like i said i felt like it was just taking a huge dump on motherhood um which was disappointing like i understand that people have different feelings um, about motherhood and not wanting to be a mother that's totally fine that's totally valid but there are ways of going out going about it without I don't know just making it seem so depressing and stuff even the way they depicted I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give away too much of the story if you're going to read it but yeah I just didn't like it maybe I didn't even maybe I didn't just didn't get it if you've read this and you have different thoughts I'd love to hear your opinions down below in the comments but like I said, this is probably the last book I'm going to read by her. Even though I said that about the muse and then I still bought this one anyway. <laughs> so I might pick up her next one. I don't know. She's a very polarising author. Um, like I said, when I bought this book, I knew it was probably going to have a dissatisfying ending for me. And I knew, you know, it had the kind of dual narratives, which I don't normally like in books. And I bought it anyway because I was curious about her writing. And for the most part, it was quite enjoyable to read until it just got closer and closer to the end. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> I can kind of see where this is going. And it's a bit like, mm. um, so yeah, this was difficult to review. Like I said, if you've read this, then please leave me your thoughts down below. I'm very mixed on it. I'm probably going to give it a three out of five, just because I said it wasn't a horrible book. It just wasn't for me. <laughs> um, the characters just weren't for me and I found it odd because sometimes like in books and again I've said this before I can read a book and not like the main character and still enjoy the story overall but this one just didn't really work on all levels for me unfortunately um it is a beautiful front cover though <laughs> um it is a beautiful looking book so yeah um, that's pretty much all I have to say on this book. I'm very mixed. If you really liked The Muse, then I think you probably would like this. But if you were on the fence about it, then you're probably going to be the same about me because I was on the fence about The Muse and I feel like that was better, that was a better book than what this is. So take of that what you will. And like I said, let me know your thoughts down below if you've read it, if you're still planning on reading it. Um, I would be interested to know your thoughts on this book. So as always, thank you for watching and until next time, bye guys.